This video is part one of what I hope will be a short series where I intend to gather some wild clay, make a pot, fire it to earthenware in a wood fire, then use it as a cooking vessel to prepare a meal, again over the coals of a wood fire. In this part I'm going to gather the clay and refine it ready for use. If I dig down a little way in my own garden I can find clay. The topsoil in my garden is a sort of silty loam. The subsoil is a mixture of gravels, sand and clay. Not far from where I live there have also been historical clay pits where clay was extracted, mostly for making bricks, so I have reasonable confidence I can get something that will work. Except there's a problem. 2022 had an exceptionally dry summer and even though we've now had some rain, in fact quite a lot of it, a lot of that rain just ran off. The top 10 or 15 centimetres of the soil is nice and soft, underneath that it's rock hard and dry as a bone. I tried pouring water into the little hole that I just dug and it just sat there. The silty nature of the topsoil here means it hydrates easily but then that hydrated layer forms a sort of seal that is quite effective at preventing water from quickly soaking away. After an hour the water I had poured into that little hole had still not completely gone. Time for a backup plan. A local friend of mine who doesn't want to appear in this video is having some foundations dug for a house extension. And let me take this bucket of subsoil for my experiment, which appears to be a mixture of yellow and grey clays and sand and gravel. Very much the same stuff that I've seen when I've dug deep in my own garden. I need to separate the clay, that is the finer mineral particles, from all the other things that are not clay. Organic material, sand, grit, rocks, which I'm going to do by washing. So I just mix it really well with water, let it stand for a minute so the larger, heavier grains can settle out, then pour off that thin, gloopy mud from the top, filtering as best I can, and then repeat until we've got a bucket full of that stuff, and then leave that bucket to settle. As a secondary process, I separated out some of the slightly less fine particles, fine sand. I won't dispose of this just yet, because I might need to add some of that back in to adjust the consistency and firing properties of the clay. This is called tempering, and it can help to make the clay less sticky and better for working, and make it shrink less when it dries, as well as inhibiting cracking during firing, and also making the final piece less susceptible to thermal shock, which will be quite important for a pot that I intend to cook in over a fire. This refinement process is like a miniaturised version of something that can happen quite naturally. The natural flow of water will tend to stir up sediments and earth, and then they settle out in ponds or meanders of river, and the clay can get naturally concentrated there. In fact, you can see that happening naturally in this picture. A big, unnatural pile of clay-rich soil on a local construction site, and look how the paler coloured clay minerals have washed out in the rain and are settling in that puddle below. Not everything that looks like clay is clay that can be fired into pots. Estuary silt can appear very clay-like, but the high proportion of organic stuff in it is likely to create cracks as it dries, and even if that was avoided, it would probably just burn and crumble when fired. Clay is usually formed from finely divided particles of silica or alumina, often with magnesium or iron compounds present too. I'm not sure what variety I have, but I do know that clay used to be extracted nearby for making bricks, as I say, so I'm reasonably sure this will fire properly if I can just get it into the shape of a pot. After only a couple of hours, there's a discernible layer of clear water on the top of the settling bucket. The finest clay particles here are yellow ochre in colour, which I think is due to the presence of iron minerals. So maybe actually yellow ochre in real composition. And I think this means it will fire red or brown if it works at all. Over time, the solids continue to settle out of the mixture and clear water can be poured off the top. It's interesting to me to see how sharp the boundary is between the clear water and the clay. It might look like this is water on top of thick mud, but that mud layer is not really much more substantial than the water. I could continue this process and just let it all dry up to the point where it becomes workable. But to speed it up, I poured it into an old pillowcase. Actually, two pillowcases, one inside the other, since I didn't have one with quite fine enough weave. Doubling the layer will help to keep the solids inside. Then I hung that up over a bucket. Clear water can drain and drip out of it, and also moisture is wicked into the cloth, where it will evaporate even on a cloudy day as the wind blows over it. I also spread out my sand to dry quicker on a tray. Now at this point you might be wondering, why go to all of this bother? Why not just use the clay as it was, as it came out of the ground? And that is a great question. In many cases clay can just be dug straight out of the ground, just like that. But in other cases it needs to be refined if it contains too much grit or just the wrong mix of particle sizes. 
Nevertheless, I have also set aside a portion of the raw clay, which I soaked a little bit, and alongside my refined clay pot, I will try making another one out of the raw wild clay for comparison. Maybe that will just work. Maybe it will explode. I'm excited to find out. It took a whole week for the clay to drain and dry until it was firm enough that I felt I could turn it out. And even then it was very soft and sticky still. It will need further drying, but at least I was able to divide it into two parts, one of which I will temper with additional sand, the other I will use as pure clay. I added some of the dry sieved sand back into the refined clay as it was a little bit too soft and squashy on its own. So these are my three batches of clay, raw, refined, and then refined plus sand. These are more or less ready to work into pots, and that was the way I processed it, and that's the end of part one. In part two, I'll take these clays and form them into pots, ready for firing. But for now, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.